Just a really quick video today about how I measure my eyesight using the end myopia calculator. I came up with a bit of a trick to help me measure more accurately. Hi, I'm Gemily, an end myopia student. I am using Jake Steiner's end myopia method of natural vision improvement to get back to 2020 eyesight and life without glasses. It's all based on science, not magic. So if you are interested in learning more, I'll pop some links in the description below. Part of the end myopia method is learning how to measure your own vision. Now, just a quick crash course if you don't already know a little bit about measuring your vision. Your vision is measured in diopters. So if you know the correction in your glasses, it's a number. If you're short-sighted or nearsighted, have myopia like me, then your number is gonna start with a negative. If on the other hand, your vision starts with a positive number, then you are long-sighted or far-sighted, which indicates hyperopia or presbyopia. That is not what we're dealing with here. So if those are your issues, then this probably isn't the video for you. I mean, maybe, I don't know how you calculate diopters for presbyopia and hyperopia. I've only learned about myopia. So that's what I'm talking about today. So a little bit of nerd info. Diopters aren't a magic number that only optometrists can give you. You work them out with a simple mathematical formula. 100 divided by centimeters to blur. Now, if that doesn't make sense to you yet, don't worry, it will by the end of this video. We're very lucky because Jake Steiner has made available on his End Myopia website a vision calculator, which makes this all very straightforward. I'll put a link in the description box below, but you can also just Google End Myopia calculator and it's pretty easy to find. So what you get is a page with the word focus on it. And in order to work out what our distance to blur is, we need to get close enough to the screen that we can see the word focus clearly and then we need to move back slowly until we start to notice the beginning of blur and that's where we measure a lot of people doing end myopia have managed to get this far but then they get a bit caught not really knowing if they're measuring correctly and at the beginning i didn't either so i came up with a bit of a trick to help me measure more accurately and as I've got more and more familiar with the myopia method and measuring my own eyesight and have been measuring my eyesight very regularly for about nine months now, I can say that my trick that I came up with in the beginning did work. So I'm gonna share it with you now. So you have the myopia calculator up, you have the word focus here. Make sure that your web page isn't zoomed in or zoomed out. Just make sure it is at 100%. There we go. <laughs> That'll make sure that the text is the right size, which is approximately 12 point font. Now, if you have a really bad quality screen, that might make this a little bit more difficult, but you always have the option to print this out and do this on a printed piece of paper. You do not have to do it on a computer screen. So make sure you have a tape measure of some kind. You can use a soft one like I have that is used for sewing, or you can use one of those retractable steel ones. Some people find the steel ones easier because you only hold it at one end. You don't have to hold the other end, but you know, it doesn't really make too big of a difference. There's always ways around things. So you measure this one eye at a time. Now it's better not to just close your eye and leave the other one because it gets a bit of squintiness and squint Squintiness can affect your visual acuity and you don't want to manipulate these results. You want them just really straightforward. What can your eye see? So I find that it's better either just to keep both eyes open but cover one of them so that it's not participating or sometimes I'll hold my eyelid down but be careful not to like press on your eye because that's not good for your eye. But if you just like hold it gently or hold even your eyelashes down, that can help in order just to not have to strain in order to have one eye open, one eye closed. Now, sometimes it's really tricky to work out where the edge of blur is. It's not like falling off a cliff and suddenly you're in blur. It's a really gradual thing. So what I did, the very first time I did this and I couldn't work out where the edge of blur was, I did a little trick. I moved all the way forward until it was like definitely clear. No question at all. So for me here, 100% this is clear. No question. And then I moved back to a point where it was 100% 
definitely that is blurry. Don't even have to think about it. And then I move forward again to where it's clear. But as soon as it became definitely clear, I stopped. Then I moved back to where I could say definitely blurry. And then I stopped. And I kept doing that. Clear, blurry, clear, blurry, clear, blurry. Making smaller and smaller movements until it kind of found that point of the edge. When I first did this, I didn't know if it was actually going to be a trick that worked, but having now that opportunity to look back and see my measurements over time, that measurement was spot on. I don't need to do this rocking anymore. Now I'm at the point where I can tell without too much self-doubt where the edge of blur starts. Once you've got your centimeters written down, you can scroll back up and you've got this little calculator available where you can type in what your centimeters are and it tells you underneath what the diopter value is. Now this is a really simple equation. You can do that without this calculator, although this calculator makes it easier. If I use a normal calculator and I were to put in 100, which is a meter, 100 centimeters, divided by your centimeters to blur. So I've just put in 100 divided by 51, which is my centimeters to blur for my right eye. And it has yielded in the calculator 1.96 diopters. Now you can't buy 1.96 diopters. So when you put this in the NMyopia calculator, the 51 centimeters, it'll give you the nearest diopter value that you can purchase in a pair of glasses, which for this one is minus two. So that little rocking trick helped me a lot just to stop overthinking it, I think was the main thing. Just to go with first impressions, don't try and push your values. The faster you measure it, actually the more accurate I find that it is because you're not going, oh, maybe, maybe that's not blurry. Maybe that, maybe that counts. No, <laughs> it probably doesn't. But there are a couple of little disclaimers about this measuring method. One, it probably doesn't work very well if you are one diopter or under in your myopia because having only minus one for your correction, it's pretty low myopia. So you're gonna have to get pretty far away from the screen before you can do this and it's really not practical. So if you have minus one myopia, it is probably just better to measure your vision using a Snellen chart. With my natural vision with no correction on, looking at my Snellen chart doesn't really help me because it's just a big blur. I really enjoy using my Snellen chart to check my normalized glasses, but for naked eye, it's kind of useless at this point. For now, for now, it's gonna get more useful the further I progress. But if you're already on really low myopia, that final diopter, Snellen chart is gonna be your best bet. And on the other end of the scale, if you are at minus four or above, you might need a bit of extra help with this end myopia calculator and measuring your centimeters to blur. Because as you get into those higher numbers, the accuracy gets more important. I'll show you why. So I have this printable diopter tape measure from endmyopia.org. It comes with the measurement course, how to measure. I really love looking at the diopters. So as you can see, when you're down in low diopter range, so if you're at minus one, that's like 11 centimeters range. You could be anywhere from 89 to 100 centimeters and it's still all minus one. But when you get up to the higher diopters, so for example, if you're at minus 5.5, you have like maybe half a centimeter. You have to be accurate to half a centimeter in order to get that measurement. And vision fluctuates. So what numbers you measure will depend on a number of factors, including what time of day it is, how good the light is, how much sleep you've had, how much sugar you've had, how stressed you are, how dry your eyes are. There's a lot of things that can make this number fluctuate. So having to be correct to half a centimeter is a pretty big ask. Whereas for my levels, around two diopters at the moment, I have about six and a half centimeters margin of error that is fine and I'll still get the right diopter result. So I know that some people who have over four diopters of myopia get around this by doing the measurements while wearing their differential glasses. I'm not completely clear on exactly how this works because I've never been in the situation to need to do this. I only started at minus three, but it's something to look into if that is you. If you have more than minus four, you might wanna think about 
doing this with differentials. Another thing is if you're over minus four diopters of myopia, you're gonna wanna also take into consideration your vertex distance. Let me demonstrate a bit. So when you're measuring to the screen, you're measuring to your eye. So actually having a measurement to your eye is actually measuring what lens you would need if it were sitting on your eyeball. That's a contact lens. But I don't know about your glasses, but mine, they don't sit on my eyeball. So this distance between my eye and my, the glass of my glasses, that makes a difference. So yes, if you're over minus four diopters doing this, you will need to convert that measurement from a contact correction to a glasses correction. Don't worry though, this isn't like a hard math job because the work has been done for you. Jake has an article on his blog that explains this really clearly and pretty much gives you the answers. So I'll link that also in the description down below. If you still aren't sure if you're measuring correctly, then with the measurements that you get, if you get the glasses for the measurements that you get as a result of this distance to blur and you wear them and look at your Snellen chart and you get 20-20 vision, then you've done it right. If you get these measurements and you're buying normalized glasses, so you drop it by 0.25 diopters and then you look at your Snellen and you're getting about 20-30 vision, maybe 20-40, pretty good. If you're doing these measurements and then you're still seeing 20-15, 20-10 on your Snellen, then not quite right. Try again. Or if you do these measurements and then you get the glasses for it and you're seeing 20 over 80 on your Snellen, again, you might wanna give it another go. So the Snellen's a really good check to make sure you're doing this right if you're a bit anxious about it. There are free Snellen's that you can find out there on the internet. I'll put a link to one in the description below, but it is only a three meter Snellen or like a nine foot Snellen, which means it's an A4 page and you need to stand three meters away from it. They're great, definitely get one of them if you don't have one, but a six meter Snellen, 20 foot Snellen, they're better. If you can be six meters away from your Snellen, you're gonna get more accuracy than if you're three meters away. I haven't found any free six meter Snellens out there on the internet yet, but Jake does have one in his measuring course. So if you get the measuring course, you'll get the diopter tape measure, and you'll also get a downloadable six meter Snellen and a three meter one as well everything. If you want also, there's a really great vision logging tool made by Varakari. It is available via the wiki as well as the forum. So I'll put a link to that as well. If you like to measure on a program instead of in a notebook and it has the extra benefit of measuring your distance to blur with different colors because some colors blur quicker than others. If I remember correctly, green will blur more quickly than red. So it's got that extra layer. I know that currently there is an iOS app being developed that allows you to use your phone to measure your distance to blur. As someone who has an Android phone, I have the impression from reading the forums that there isn't an Android app, but I have one, so it must be an unofficial one. But again, I'll put a link to that one below. So if you have any other measuring tips or questions, please feel free to comment below. I try and answer every single one. And do also please remember to like and subscribe to get more content from me and hit that little bell button. I post every Thursday, so I will see you next week. Bye. Those are big words, big words of natural vision. I'm using Jack Steiner's end myopia method at Oh, okay, that moved. Use more for building. Oh, I can't find my logbook. Logbook! Nope, logbook's gone. Logbooky, booky, booky, booky. I got fluff on my lip. Another thing to consider is your vertex. So I have this diopter. That's really bad.